welcome back to the channel guys and season 8 is ended now and we managed to finish on our all time high rating of 27 i think i guess it was 27.30 so uh couldn't reach uh, legend though but fortunately we were able to make it through the expert rankings this time and got pretty close i think i was uh uh, my season best was 28.50 which was also uh, also the best rating I have obtained till now. So so yeah, I, I am expecting uh, to hit legend this season and uh, I, I have learned a lot uh, the past two seasons and I, I think I am pretty confident that I will be able to do that this time. So, so yeah, and uh, now uh, moving on to the season 9, uh, a lot of move updates, a lot of Pokemons getting buff, uh, buffs and nerfs. So uh, in starting with the today's video, we are going to feature Shadow Nido King and uh, we are going to feature it along with its partner Shadow Nido Queen and uh, I originally wanted to do a uh, Polyrath uh, today but I felt like that Nido King probably was uh, was a better pick to start the season 9 so uh, the video I was going to upload today will be uploaded tomorrow um, so stay tuned for that if you want to if you are interested in a uh, skull Polyrath and uh, and yeah, I think uh, th this two combination along with the Obstagoon in the lead really makes for a strong team. I think uh, I might even continue using it for some time. And uh, and yeah, before we start with the battles, if you are new to the channel and if you like our content, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. The channel has really grown recently and we are targeting to get 2000 subs uh, pretty soon. So help us to get to the target and it's free. So so yeah uh, just click the like and subscribe button and all the guys who has been already subscribed to the channel a big thanks to all of you and also if you want to join the battle set discord server the link to that is in the description down below so without further delays let's start with the battles and see how the battle goes so let's see what do we get and we are in a raichu lead so this is a good lead but i think i would eventually swap after uh, taking after throwing in one night slash because uh, raichu gets to this charge move pretty quickly and we do have two ground types running the background so might as well use them so raichu i think goes for an overtap and we are able to fortunately poison jab it down so they wasted a lot of energy and in comes galarian stun fisk and this is where i think uh nido king uh gets an advantage over nido queen because uh, as you can see the uh the damage coming in from earth bar is pretty good and i realized in this matchup that uh, you can uh, shield once and uh, really farm down the uh, galarian stun fisk which i think you cannot really do in the nido queen matchup because um nido queen is a defense uh, oriented pokemon whereas uh, the nido king is an attack weighted pokemon so in comes uh, their umbreon so the game is pretty much wrapped up at this point of time because uh, we do have a fairly healthy obstacle in the back so after uh, performing a debuff we just make a swap so at this point i uh, really don't uh, care about the uh, the charge move timing because the game is pretty much done but i definitely from my previous season i definitely observed that i really need to work on it because uh, a lot of matchups i have lost because uh, because i really wasn't timing uh, my charge moves correctly so that is one of the area that i'm going to definitely work the work around this time and uh, i think it was a psychic umbreon as well so the game was pretty much pretty much wrapped up as soon as uh, it as soon as both their pokemon went down so yeah good game moving on to the next one uh, we are in a defense deoxys lead so um, i swapped out of uh, that matchup immediately because i didn't really want uh, obstagoon to stay in and plus we are running abb line so might as well swap it so they go they went for a psycho boost which was um, uh, which was a good shield to be honest uh, so now i'm going for a sand tomb bait fortunately that landed uh, uh, and they come in with a bastard on so this is this is like probably the best situation we could have been in um so going for another sand tomb bait because uh they, they surprisingly uh, shielded that as well, uh, but unfortunately Nido King uh, will need to shield or I let go of Nido King at this point because um, uh, the uh, the Bastardon is already debuffed and we can uh, look to completely farm down the Bastardon from at this point of time and the opponent is uh, shieldless so I I was expecting a Galarian stun fisk in the back so let's see if they if they have that Pokemon or not so we farm a bunch of extra energy and uh, I think uh, in comes defense from Deoxy so uh, since the counter went through i will need to perform the swap because uh, obstagoon might have uh, gotten ko'd i was not really sure and i didn't really want to waste all that energy 
and that's the reason i swapped into nido queen um so let's see they have a medicham in the back uh, but since we were ahead on energy we will be able to beat this medicham uh, to an earth bar and the earth bar definitely will do a lot of damage on to the medicham so uh, if it's an ice punch which i think it is we can survive it um so ice punch a uh, nido queen so a uh, nido queen survives it and we are able to uh, poison jab down the medicham and uh, the defense from deoxys is definitely in a in a poison fang range so uh, both the shield baits went in pretty uh, pretty uh, easily uh, i think that was probably the uh, that was probably the uh, that was probably where the game was sealed so so yeah good game moving on to the next one we are in a beat drill lead so this lead is particularly not good for uh, for my team because uh, i think beetle has a decent matchup against every pokemon in my team so i uh, chip at this beetle with the uh, with the night slash and come in with the uh, nido king and uh, i think i made another mistake here of uh, not throwing the sand to me immediately uh, i like i not I, i don't really know what i was doing there but i think if i had thrown this, uh, this uh, if i had thrown the sand to me uh pretty early i think uh, the match would have been different because now uh, i will not be able to farm down uh, the altaria to uh, to the health which i want and uh, the reason i wanted altaria to be very low because i wanted to come in with nido queen and farm uh, the altaria so as you can see uh, altaria is left with very low health and uh, maybe if i had thrown the sand to at the correct time uh, i would not have to take the uh, take the sky attack damage so certainly uh, i think uh, um, i i got got a call at that point of time uh, at which that um, uh, the connection got dis disconnected but i ended up losing that match they were having a defense from the oxys in the back so uh, so so yeah i yeah uh, there is no point in discussing about that previous one so moving up, moving on to the next match we are in a hitmon chan we were in a court uh, wimsy got lead so that was a very horrible lead for us but since we are running abb line uh, that probably is the way to go so i go for the sand tomb and uh, this time i didn't really do that mistake of uh, of staying in that matchup or not throwing the sand tomb uh, very late so they double shield and they went for the switch advantage rather than the shield advantage and if they are not running a confusion user in the back i think uh, nido queen will have a very good play up against uh, their back line especially with shields up and in comes bastidon so this game is pretty much wrapped up because uh, nido queen has a very favorable matchup against bastardon and since uh, one earthquake doesn't take down bastardon re you really would want to debuff the bastardon before you go for an earth bar because otherwise you will end up uh, using two earth bars which definitely is not the way to go and and yeah got wmc got just goes down with the poison jab so yeah coming out with uh, with a very bad lead so moving on to the next matchup we are in a talent flame lead so i charge i as you can see my uh, timing uh, is charge move timing is improving so certainly it's not uh, not very optimum uh, but but as you can see i'm definitely learning so they expecting this to be a flame charge so they go for a flame charge and i was okay of letting go down of obstagon at that point of time because uh, i if they went for a brave bird i could have come in with nido king nido king and farm down so uh, i take the incinerate damage on to the nido king because uh, i feared that obstagon would go down to that incinerate damage um so as uh, i was trying to uh, not really sure what i was trying to do there but i go went for a sand tomb uh, it, that doesn't take out the talent flame but fortunately the subsequent poison jabs did and we are able to throw the sand tomb as well onto the opposing obstagon so this is looking really good for us uh, so they do not shield this obviously because uh, sand tomb is doesn't do really that much damage so i come in with nido queen and i hope to farm down uh, the opposing uh, opposing obstagon completely so let's see they get a boost so i will need to shield this charge move uh, otherwise nido queen will go down and then my obstagon will take massive amount of damage from those counters fortunately we are able to completely farm down their obstagon and they have a berserker in the back and as soon as i saw steel type i thought that it was a regi steel and that's why i went for a poison fang at and this point i was really thinking i threw the game away but certainly uh, i think it was a cmp type but uh, they go for the earth part to take down the uh, take down the berserker so yeah good game
Moving on to the next match and we are in an obstacle mirror matchup and uh, at some point after throwing the cross shop I would have uh, swapped but it was a CMP die which I lost so I would have to invest a shield now. So if the opponent shields I'm going to stay in but if they do not I'm going to swap into Nido King and uh, the reason I'm using Nido King as a safe swap because uh, it's an attack weighted Pokemon so the worst it, it will do uh, it will grab the shield. So I go for uh, Earth Bar this time around because Charizard is a squishy Pokemon uh, but the opponent ends up shielding the charge move which is not particularly uh, good for me because uh, the Charizard is not debuffed and hence I let go of the uh, Nido King at this point of time because I don't want to go both the shields down um, so I'll come in with Nido Queen and look to completely farm down this Charizard and see if I'm able to do that so um, uh, the Charizard gets to a Dragon Claw so I definitely would want to shield because uh, Nido uh, I've, Charizard is also an attack weighted Pokemon so it will it would have done a lot of damage to it so we go for this earth bar this will put the venusaur into the reds uh, so venusaur uh, take a lot of damage and now i swap to obstacle to force them to force them to throw because i didn't really want uh, wanted uh, the venusaur to farm a lot of energy so we will be able to completely farm down the venusaur uh, i mean there was not much energy to left with but uh, that's this will allow us to get to the poison fang and throw this onto their obstacle so obstacle will go down and we will be able to take that match so yeah good game uh, moving on to the next one, we are in a Galarian Stunfisk match. So this is a positive lead for Obstagoon and uh, getting a weak connection notification which is obviously not good. So in comes there again uh, Charizard again. So two char back to back Charizards in two games uh, which is not quite good for my backline. Uh, uh, my entire team uh, at for instance uh, and i got a bit greedy there i uh, didn't i wasn't really counting the energy on the charge uh, on the charizard and uh, and this uh, forced me to use both my shields and uh, i have a lot of energy though let's see what they come back in with um, so they are taking their sweet time and they come in with victory well and i went for the earth bar because i thought it's going to be a venusaur uh, seeing the uh, grass and poison typing but victory bell just deletes uh, the nido king and uh, nido queen also is taking a lot of damage but the game is still not over in my opinion because uh, we do have an obstagoon against up against their uh, their galarian stun so i make an immediate swap to my obstagoon and getting a getting a bunch of lag like I, i'm not sure how much uh, how much energy i lost there or uh, or like I, I wasn't really sure that how much uh, yeah that that was that was not good but they will uh, get to an earthquake and now uh, we will be able to beat them to the next charge move so i was trying to go for a cmp tie there because i didn't wanted uh, uh, the the stunfish to go for uh, to go for a, an extra farm of my obstacle so hence i did that but uh, let's see what's going to happen so we are able to get to a poison fang but i farmed extra energy because i was expecting the swap uh, but the the yeah yeah that's that's not going to happen so so yeah that was a close one indeed but we are able to uh, we didn't uh, win that one but yeah good game moving on to the next one picking up another positive lead and in comes this this poor little bunny which is just going to get demolished by uh, the nido king so definitely we would want to shield an ice beam because that's going to do a lot of damage and uh, this time around also as you can see i didn't over farm and i threw after uh, the op the uh, the azumarill threw one uh, one bubble so i'm trying to uh, like time my charge moves very uh, very accurately so uh, they go for an ice beam and now we will be able to completely farm down this azumarill and a lot of people don't really know that uh, the damage coming in from uh, nido king does a lot of of damage to Bastidons and Galarian Stunfisk in comparison to uh, what uh, what Nido Queen does as, as you can see that basically one shot the uh, opponent's Bastidon so that might not have been an excel Bastidon so but yeah uh, the opponent even even the one shield up was really helpless against the obstacle so yeah good game moving on to the next one and we are in a Pelipper lead so glad that we are we are seeing this Pelipper in the in the front rather than in the back which is going to uh, which would have caused problems uh, otherwise so uh, they did not shield the first charge move and uh, I, I 
think I didn't really uh, time the ch uh, charge move there uh, and hence Belipper is ahead on uh, ahead by one extra wing attack so we are going to survive this with the ball so I didn't really shield this and now I'll go for this with the uh, I go for uh, the night slash and if this was uh, season 8 Belipper uh, without the uh, nerf on the weather ball uh, that second weather ball would have killed so uh, I definitely would want to shield uh, this weather ball uh, but we will be able to farm down so the opponent makes a swap to the Galarian stun fist and this is definitely going to be a rock slide so I, I do not need to shield this charge move um, so we go for uh, this earth bar let's see if the opponent decides to shield or not uh, the best situation would be that if they not shield this uh, and which they did so uh, the Galarian stun fist will be able to get to another charge move which is not quite good um, so this is going to be rock slide uh, which takes out the Nido King uh, but we can come in with Queen to uh, completely farm down this uh, uh, this Galarian stun fix and I wanted to make a swap at that point of time to catch a rock slide but I was uh, I didn't because I was expecting a debuff Pokemon in the back but it ends up being a uh, a Bastardon and here I did not make uh, go for Poison Fang because uh, they could have really swapped to their Pelipper uh, to clear that debuff which would have uh, basically yeah it is the effect of Poison Fang and I tried to catch on a charge move there but unfortunately that did not happen so um, so yeah uh, we are in a tough spot here but I go for this charge move uh, straight away fortunately the uh, the opponent did not make a sack swap uh, so we are going for a farm down and I had to throw because I was taking a lot of damage from those smackdowns and uh, they have a pelipper in the back which will do neutral damage with those wing attacks so we they come in with uh, I'm not really sure what happened uh, but pelipper yeah a lot of swaps happened I, I, I wasn't really able to follow it so yeah uh, we, it ends up being in, in a draw so yeah good game Moving on to the next one, we are in a Polytoad matchup. So Polytoad also got a nerf with the Weather Ball uh, nerf and they make a really great swap onto their uh, Umbreon to take on the charge move. Uh, but now I come in with Nidoking King because I uh, because Polytoad really is a, is a bad news for my backline. So we go uh, they go for a Psychic which basically one shots the Nido King which is yeah which was very really sad to see. Uh, but I'm in a tough spot here uh, really. But now that I know that they are running uh, Psychic and Foul Play potentially, I, I do not really want to shield. I can charge up to up to 2000 energy and it's not going to do any damage to uh, to obstacle and not really sure why the opponents keep going on for psychic they should have go for foul play and here i went for night slash because i was expecting a boost which i clearly got there so that was that was pretty lucky because that probably changed the outcome of the game because now the opponent would be forced to uh, forced to shield and i farm one extra energy and go for um, go for this night slash i was hoping to get grab a shield as well but i did not so uh, it ends up being a cmp tie so i could not really make a swap and it's going to be a bone club because shadow bone is going to be double resisted so not double but triple resisted in my opinion so uh, so yeah uh, nido king nido queen will take a lot of damage uh, with the shadow bone but it's it's all right because nido queen at this point of time is just a burden especially especially with uh, polytoad hanging around in the front so uh, i am fine with letting go of of, uh, the Nido Queen at this point of time is or a shield a uh, questionable play but in comes the Polytoad fortunately we are able to throw this Poison Fang at this Polytoad which will help uh, the Obstagoon in the back uh, so the shield which is quite good and it was a CMP die so I let go of the Nido Queen at this point of time all I need to do is I need to get to two uh, to night slash to take down the uh, polytoad because with the defense debuff and with the shadow uh, shadow nerf onto the defense i think it will be enough so i was e expecting another boost here which which it was very unlikely but i went for uh, this night slash uh, or they, they, they don't have any shields but polytoad i think was uh, was almost at another uh, weather ball which would have taken us out so that was a very very close game and i think the boost certainly helped uh, and that's that was the reason uh, or that was the intention that i I went for a night slash so so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you really enjoyed watching uh, some nido king battles and uh, in my opinion this team in in overall is is very strong and i would definitely recommend using at least in the early stages of the meta so so yeah uh, if you like this video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button until next time peace